Welcome to the tutorial on Bitsy Inc. In this video, we're going to continue our trend of working with dialog within Bitsy. So in previous videos, we've gone over most of the major concepts involved when we create something in Bitsy. We have avatar, the thing we move around, tiles, which can be backgrounds or potentially walls, sprites, the things we interact with, and items, the things we use. All of these are within rooms. When we want to create multiple subsections of a game or story within Bitsy, we create different rooms in which we have the avatar, tiles, sprites, and items. So in a previous video, we were working with sprites, in particular with dialogue using the dialogue tool. So if I come over here to the paint tool, I've selected sprite, and then I come down here and notice automatically we have a sprite, which has a dialogue that says, I'm a cat. And if I come over to the top of this and click this, I can pop out the dialogue tool that says I'm a cat. So previously we saw how we can add different things to interactions. So we interact with sprites and we can work with their interactions. We previously saw how we can add dialogue. So I clicked add and then over here dialogue, we have dialogue or page break. So in another video, we saw how we can add multiple dialogues and then when they're run, if they have one thing after another after another, they will be all combined together. Just to show you that real quick, let's add here. I will add one more. And notice the arrows pointing down. This is the order in which they're going to be run. So I'm a cat, three dots, and then three dots. So let's go ahead and play this just so we can see this one more time as a reminder. So I'm going to move down here, and then as a reminder, when we move the avatar, we're using WASD or the arrow keys on a keyboard, and I interact by colliding with. It says I'm a cat, and then we see six dots. So all of those dialogues were put together. Well, when we think of these dialogue interactions, and notice these were all combined over here, when we think of them as separate pages within Bitsy, we can break them up using the other thing we saw. So if I click add and dialogue, page break will break things into different pages, start a new page of dialogue. Now, if we add dialogue after this, we will notice that we have six dots and then we'll have a page break and then we'll have three dots. So if we run this now, and I come down and interact with the cat, it says I'm a cat, we see six dots, a page break, and then three dots. Okay. So we know so far that we can start to craft dialogue by using what I've just shown. We can create dialogue, create page breaks, and show different things to a user or player as they interact with things. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these right here, because what I want to talk about in this video is three other related concepts that are part of another menu. So we were clicking Add, and then immediately go into Dialogue. For this video, we're going to go to Lists. So we have sequence, cycle, and shuffle. We're gonna to come to branching list in a different video. So for this video, we're interested in sequence, cycle, and shuffle. Now remember what I just showed when we were moving from dialogue to on the dialogue or dialogue to page break, we were looking at arrows. They were pointing down. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on sequence this time. So it says go through each item once in sequence. So as we interact with something, it will go one and then two, and then stop it too. We will move through a sequence one after another. So let's show that. Let's go ahead and shift this to A and shift two to B. And let's now run this so we can see it in action. So again, interacting with this cat, it will show us A, doing another interaction here, do a second one, there it goes B. And then any future interactions will always give us the last in order. So this is a sequence. We move through the sequence to the end, and then we stop at the end. Okay, well, let's look at our other options. I'm going to remove this, and then let's go to lists instead of sequence to cycle, where there might be some cases when we're interested in have repeating options. So instead of moving through to the last one, we want to go back to the first again. So let's do this one more time. This is A. This is B, and now I want to add one more to this. So notice I've clicked up here in cycle list right here, and I click add option, and now we have third. A, B, and C, which will run in sequence, but then cycle back to A. So let's go ahead and play this. So again, interacting down here, going to collide with the cat. We will see A, 
B, C, back to A. So this is now a cycle of these. So we've seen so far, we can create a sequence moving to the end and then stopping at the last item. And we can create a cycle, which cycles through them. So let's look at the last one. So list, sequence, cycle, and shuffle. And again, we'll look at branching in a future video. So for shuffle, this shows items in a random order. So let's do the same thing again. We've got A, and we've got B, and right now we don't have anything else. So let's go ahead and play. Well, a shuffle list will show things in a random order. So because there are only two items, we get a 50% chance of seeing A or B every, every time we interact. A or B, B. So notice for this, though, they're shown in a random order. So sequence shows things in the order that we provide and then stops the last one. Cycle list moves through the items in sequence and then cycles back. And shuffle shows things in a random order. Now, the reason why I've covered these is because, as we saw previously with the dialogue and then with page break, is everything we add here will be done in the order in which we add it. So, shuffle list, A or B, let's add, dialogue, page break. So, a new page, add, dialogue, dialogue. And now say chance. So now it's going to give us one of these two shuffled from this, then do a page break, and then come down here and show us chance. So now if we play, interact with the cat, B, page break, chance. They are run in order. So while it may not seem initially useful to have dialogues and page breaks, although in some cases they might be, we can now combine that with lists using the knowledge we already have. That they run top to bottom following these arrows. So one of these two things, page break and then new text down here. And this becomes very powerful because now we can integrate any of those things we previously covered. We can have new dialogues, new page breaks, sequence, cycle, and shuffle all within the same dialogue item right here. Because this is all the dialogue for cat. So potentially our conversations could get fairly complex as we mix in these various things. So at least for this video, we're introducing the idea of putting in more things of dialogue. Principally, we previously looked at dialogue, which over here included dialogue or page break. If I go back, now we have lists, sequence list, cycle list, and shuffle list. And again, we'll come to branching in the future. And these now add to the things that we can provide for interactions as we interact with sprites and in the future interact with items in a similar way. All using the dialogue tool right here, which we initially got to from the paint tool by selecting a sprite and changing its dialogue over here, popping out the new tool as needed. So more concepts we can use as we start to edit stories and games within Bitsy 8. Thanks for watching.